Hi, my name is Bruce Stewart. I'm a technical service manager with FMC located out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. Well, today I wanted to talk about an important pest, and that's western bean uh, cutworm and its control with Vantacore insect control. This has been an important pest to corn for many years, and historically it's really been a pest more in the uh, western United States, kind of that Great Plains area, the northern Texas panhandle, uh, Kansas, uh, up to Colorado and even in Nebraska, but now we're starting to see it kind of move uh, eastward as well. So this pest really prefers kind of sandy soils and, and areas that has uh, grass growing around it. Perfect example is a pivot of corn with a corner of grass in it. That's where we're going to see some of the highest uh, infestations. The name is a little bit of a misnomer. Oftentimes when we think of cutworms, we're thinking of that it feeds on that new uh, plant as it's coming up. But really with the western bean cutworm, it's one that feeds on the reproductive stage, the ear of that uh, corn plant. So it's going to do a lot of damage in there once it gets inside the ear, feeding on the kernels, also causing uh, that kernel kernels to be open and then that allows mold to come in and then what can happen if the elevator is going to get docked if, if you have high dawn levels in that uh, corn. So uh, research has shown that about one larvae uh, per plant can cause about a four bushel per acre uh, decrease in yield. Also if you have multiple larvae in an ear, uh, some research has shown about 15 to 20 percent yield reduction. So again, this pest is one that feeds on the ear of the corn plant and can cause a major reduction in quality uh, there. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the life cycle of the western bean cutworm. It overwinters as a pupal stage down in the soil and then come uh, early July, kind of depending on your location, the moths then start to emerge, both males and females. They'll then mate and then the females will then uh, gravitate towards uh, leaves on corn that are kind of vertical, kind of in that whirl stage right before uh, tasseling. And lay an egg mass up on the upper side of that leaf, kind of in the, uh, on this vertical leaf. Uh, so this egg laying period can last from uh, July to August. And again, those eggs are laid up on that vertical uh, leaf surface. When the eggs are first laid, they're white but then they kind of turn tan and purple. Uh, and then once the young larvae uh, start to hatch, usually that's about five to seven day period, uh, they then start consuming uh, the uh, eggshell. So oftentimes you won't even be able to see the egg mass uh, that the female has laid after they've uh, consumed all the eggshell. Usually there's about oh, 20 to 200 eggs laid in an egg mass and uh, then once those young larvae have hatched, then they start making their journey down to the ear, uh, all the way from up there, down there, and along the way they may consume anthers, pollen, uh, leaf tissue uh, along the way before they finally get into that ear. And once inside that ear, uh, they start feeding and uh, causing uh, damage to yield, and also can, as I'd mentioned earlier, uh, opening the kernels up for molds and other fungi to get in there uh, that can ultimately cause a reduction in, in uh, pricing at the elevator. When we're monitoring for western bean cutworm, again we need to remember where the female has laid the eggs on those vertical leaves, usually prior uh, to tasseling. That's where we need to focus our efforts when we're scouting uh, for this pest. Again, those eggs hatch in about five to seven days, kind of dependent on the temperature. Uh, usually, uh, we're going to initiate an insecticide application when we have about four to eight uh, percent of those plants with egg masses on them. And then we usually time the application and want to have it out there when about 70 to 90 percent of those eggs have hatched. Uh, once inside that ear, uh, you know, game is over really. We're not going to be able to get to that young larvae that's down inside that ear. Uh, so we really need to make sure we're getting our application of insecticide on uh, before that young larvae gets into that ear. You know one product that uh, is very effective in controlling uh, this important pest is Vanicor insect control. 
It is an anthranilic uh, diamide and it works on the muscle system of the western bean cutworm. Uh, once that western bean cutworm takes the first bite of the uh, vanticore insect control, its behavior is going to be affected. It may not die immediately, but its behavior and feeding is, has stopped. Uh, it is translaminar. It's going to kind of move into that leaf. It's going to be protected from rainfall and, and sunlight. You know, coverage is essential uh, for this uh, product to work effectively. So we want to make sure we're using the right volume, whether it's aerial application or, or uh, ground rigs or or even chemigation. So uh, we usually go out about 1.2 to 2.5 fluid ounces uh, per acre. And uh, you know, the nice thing with Vanacore, it's a highly concentrated formulation, but can be mixed with, you know, uh, miticides or fungicides or other things that you might be doing at that time that you make a, a Vanacore application. Nice thing with uh, Vanticore is it won't flare mites, has very limited impact on uh, beneficials, so that won't be a concern for you. And in addition, you're going to get grasshopper and other caterpillar control that's in the field as well, whether you have corn earworm and uh, going to do an excellent job on grasshoppers as well. So Vanicor is absorbed into that eggs. If they're out there, it's going to be absorbed into that egg shell. Once that larvae takes the first bite, it's going to control it. As it moves on to the foliage, it's going to be able to uh, control the larvae that way as well. So just to summarize about Vanticore Insect Control, it's a long-lasting product. It has a low use rate, 1.2 to 2.5 fluid ounces uh, per acre. It can be applied by air, ground rig, or chemigation. It works through uh, ingestion, so we need to have good coverage. Uh, there is some dermal contact, uh, but primarily uh, ingestion. And finally, you know, it's not going to flare mites. It's very easy on beneficials and other uh, predators. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about coming in uh, with a miticide. So good luck to you on controlling this important pest. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact someone from FMC. Thanks. Mm -hmm.